standing in the vehicle assembly building, a space age machine for the assembly of stages of rockets, which can transport three astronauts to the moon and back to Earth. With the help of this model of the Saturn V, we will describe the major parts of the rocket, which are shipped here to be assembled into a launch vehicle. The first stage is the largest. Its five engines produce seven and one half million pounds of thrust burning kerosene and liquid oxygen as the propellant. The second stage also has five engines, which burn liquid hydrogen with oxygen to generate a million pounds of thrust. Next, the considerably smaller third stage with its single hydrogen-fueled engine is erected. This small ring is the instrument unit which guides the vehicle in flight. The spacecraft for the moon launch is mounted next. It consists of three parts. The lunar module, in which two astronauts will descend to the moon's surface, fits inside the tapered adapter. The Earth return engine and other equipment are in this service section. And the Apollo spacecraft, in which the astronauts ride. Assembly is completed when the launch escape system is fitted on top of the Apollo. Now let's see the assembly operation with full-scale stages. The first stage, fabricated by Boeing Aircraft Company at NASA's Mishu facilities near New Orleans, arrives by ocean-going barge. 33 feet in diameter and 138 feet long, this empty stage weighs more than a quarter million pounds. The loaded transporter carries the stage into the low bay at the south end of the building, where it is prepared for erection on the mobile launch platform. These launchers have towers 45 stories high. A massive transporter with a deck as big as a baseball diamond moves under the mobile launcher, lifts it, and carries it inside. A powerful crane moves into position. The first stage is lifted high above the transfer aisle. Then the crane shifts its load to a point above the launch deck and gently lowers it into position where the hold down arms secure it in place. The second stage also arrives by barge from the North American Aviation Plant in California. The 82 foot stage is erected in the low bay for thorough check and prepared for the move to the high bay assembly area. When the second stage is ready to be joined to the first stage, a bridge crane moves it down the transfer aisle, then it is lifted to position over the first stage. Access doors are provided between the stages. These permit the technicians to enter the rocket as necessary. As each stage is erected, one or more arms are swung out from the mobile launch tower to make contact with the vehicle. In addition to fuel lines, these arms also provide electrical connections which terminate in the adjoining launch control center. There, technicians read the pulse of the giant rocket as it is put together. Through data displays of many types, they observe the exact status of each system and whether it interacts properly with the other systems. Test after test, many of them concurrent, confirm readiness to proceed to the next step of assembly. This firing room, one of four, which match the high bays in the VAB where the rockets are assembled, maintains close control of every detailed procedure from assembly through transport to the pad and finally the launch itself. Again, in the low bay area of the VAB, the third stage, which was flown from the Douglas Aircraft Plant in California has been inspected. Then, the crane transfers it into the assembly bay. The third stage tanks are only two-thirds the diameter of the first two stages, so an adapter skirt is employed to join them. The instrument unit is contained in this ring. Inside the ring are electronic controls which steer the rocket in outbound flight and telemetry units 
which relay information from all parts of the vehicle back to the ground. Guidance commands are initiated in flight by an all-inertial guidance system. Elements of attitude, speed, and direction which show where the vehicle is going are compared to the program flight path. Miniature computers convert this information into course corrections which order the engines to tilt or gimbal a precise amount. The outer ring of four engines on the first and second stages and the single engine of the third stage all may be gimbaled while burning. The instrument unit built by IBM Corporation in Alabama is one of the most critical components of the Saturn V. Next is the space flight section made up of three units which have been assembled in the manned spacecraft operations building. Within the flared section at the bottom is the lunar module in which two astronauts will land on the moon. The lunar module is manufactured by Grumman Aircraft Company in New York. The service section in the middle contains the Earth's return engine and fuel, plus other equipment and supplies needed for the 500,000 mile journey. This and the spacecraft itself come from North American Aviation in California. The conical Apollo spacecraft, which houses the three astronauts, is placed at the top. Finally, the launch escape system, a 29-foot solid fuel rocket assembly, tops off the Saturn V. This system comes from the Lockheed Propulsion Company in California. If a mishap occurs during the early stages of flight, this rocket will ignite and carry the spacecraft and its three astronauts to safety. When the completely assembled Saturn Apollo 5 is ready to leave the vehicle assembly building, back comes the transporter. It moves inside, lifts the 12 million pound load, and transports the mobile launcher and rocket along the crawler way at a speed of one mile per hour to the launch site. The Saturn Apollo 5 stages meet here for the first time. To integrate these parts and make sure they will work together flawlessly is the prime purpose of the building in which you stand.